Good afternoon, Andoni. Afternoon. Um, we'll start with the breaking news uh, and the upsetting news, really, with regards to Junior Traore, who has uh, unfortunately had malaria. He's been in hospital and, and been rather unwell. Could you just give us an update on his situation and, and how is he? Yeah, it was. Right now, he's, he's recovering. He's much better than it was past weeks. It has been a really tough situation for him personally because of the timing and because it's a disease that gets you very weak, you know. And uh, now he's out from the hospital, he's uh, here with us, but uh, from the sport side, he will be, he has to be out for, for some time, yeah. Obviously a big blow for the club and for the player. His health is, is paramount and I'm led to believe there'll be more tests and he'll be monitored and looked after for the coming weeks and months by the club. Yes, for sure, for sure. Uh, they have to check that everything works well, all the, all his body is is working properly. But for sure, he will be out for for some months. I cannot uh, be more concrete. But uh, obviously, he will not be part of the African Nations Cup, and uh, he will not be able to play for us for some time yet. Well, our thoughts obviously go to to him uh, at this difficult time. Um, I would say, did you have a good Christmas? But six wins in seven matches, unbeaten in that time, I think I know the answer. Is this the best period you've ever had as a manager in, in football, the best run? Yeah, I would say even as a player, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. It's very difficult to win games uh, in a row. To play, I think we've won four in a row away. This is it's really difficult, even if you are uh, uh, playing for important uh, teams, uh, it's not so easy. But we also were coming from a very bad run, you know, and we are now in a good position, but we still want to keep adding more points, adding more wins. Now we know we have a tough schedule, starting from Sunday's game against the Spurs away, especially after the, the, the loss yesterday in, in Brighton. For sure they will be uh, willing to, to bounce back and play very good against us, but we have to prepare for this game. I guess as well with the current run and the, the feel-good factor around the group that you've created, there's a no-fear attitude at the moment. You don't mind playing any team, you look forward to every game because there's a belief that you can beat anyone. Yeah, we know right now that if we give our best level, we can be competitive. We have to show that we can beat these top teams. Uh, we know that we are gonna suffer there for sure. It doesn't matter if we play well or not, because they it's a team that puts pressure on you. We will be without the ball a lot of time, so we have to be ready for this. And then we have to trust also our our especially our offensive uh, power. And we know that our forwards right now they are in a good moment. And if, if, if we are defending well, we are playing well, we'll have our chances for sure, yes. Up next in the Premier League, Tottenham Hotspur away. Could you just give us an update on the, the team news? We know obviously that Junior won't be involved for some time. Are there any players that you're welcoming back or any concerns you have? I think right now we are not changing a lot because at the end the, the, mar the, the days are just three, four days. Uh, the only player we could recover, maybe, I don't know, it's uh, Louis Cook. The rest, I think they are not uh, close to to being with the with the group, so it could be the only the only change, but uh, it's not guaranteed. We have to see if tomorrow he can train with us and help us. Tottenham have been one of the exciting teams to watch in the Premier League this season. Much like yourself, Ange Postecoglou has gone into the club, created a new philosophy, a new style of play. The players seem to be really enjoying it. They're exciting to watch. I know they played last night. What have you made to them this season? Did you watch the game last night? Yes, of course, we watched the game. I think they are a really good team. They have uh, very, very good players. They play uh, very attractive football and uh, I think they are getting also their results. No? Uh, if we want to, to compete against them, we have to give our 100% because they are very physical, they run a lot, they attack very well the spaces, they can play in tight spaces, they are comfortable even under pressure. I remember the game we played against them, and I finished quite happy with the game. We were good this game, but they won us 2-0 quite easy, I would say, you know. So 
we we know that we have to give our 100 if we want to have any chance and just final points for me um there's so much talk about dominic solanke um 13 goals in all competitions this season he's having the the best season in in his career um how how much do you take pride in what he's doing what he's doing off the ball the goals he's scoring and how difficult will it be to resist any potential offers in January because there will be a lot of big clubs that will look at his goals ratio and the way he's playing and go he's the striker for us i don't feel dom has changed so much from the beginning of the season it's not like he was not playing well and now no i think the collective improvement probably makes him look a little bit better, but he was very good since day one. I think he scored the first game of the season and has been really good from from the beginning of the season. You ask me from the market, I, obviously I don't want to lose Dom Solanke. It's, it's, uh, it's very easy for me to say, but every time the, the, the market opens, coaches, we don't know what is going to happen, so we cannot uh, have nothing for for guaranteed. Hopefully you won't lose any players, but of course you can sign players from Monday. Have you got plans in place to bring people in at the start of the window, or are you just going to monitor and let things develop? No, I don't think in 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 the winter market we're going to see a lot of changes. Normally it's not a market where you can sign a lot of players. I suppose and I think some of the players that are not uh, having the minutes they want, they will ask for for uh, for loans or for for departures to other places, and we will have to replace if they are departures. We will have to replace uh, with other with other players. But uh, I don't expect uh, as as much movement that normally happens in the in the summer. Anthony, good to see you again. Um, touched on your current form. When you're playing like you are, when everyone else is wanting time off at this time of year, you just want the games to continue to come thick and fast, don't you? Yeah, I think uh, we are in a good moment also physically. You know, even uh, after this busy schedule and we are not changing so so much, but players are recovering really well. Physically, I see that we finish the games in a, in a good condition, so we it's good for us that we continue playing and uh, we have... Uh, Tottenham game and then the FA Cup game before the small break. So I hope we can continue our form and be competitive in these two last games. Things looking very settled for you right now, and that's reflected in your, your excellent run of form. Touch on the increased squad depth and competition, though, within your squad. Is it making it more difficult for you for those personnel calls, those selection calls that you're going to have to make moving forward? Yeah, for me it's, it's difficult to make the starting eleven. It's not like we are winning. Okay, they continue the same. Sometimes we are changing normally one, two players because everyone is coming also from the bench. They are doing well. They are putting pressure on the, of the on the ones that are starting, and it's, it's not being easy for me to make the the decisions. And it's good for the team. This internal competition is very good for the team. And. Uh, if we recover more more injured players, it's gonna be even tougher. And I think it's the way to to build, you no, know, the 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 team. Yeah. Alex Scott recently spoke about the confidence that you've given him, the confidence since your arrival at Bournemouth. You've given the entire squad. How important for you is that in management? Is it one of the most key things that you can look at the way that you look to transform a squad and and try and build a squad? I think it has. It's, I give them confidence because they are good players. You know, if they weren't good players, I wouldn't uh, uh, lie to them. No, I think uh, we have uh, good players, and uh, we have to find a way to to make them even look better. No, and something starts from something collective. It's normally it doesn't happen. No, this team is playing very bad, but. Oh, the number nine is very good, amazing, scoring a lot of goals. No, it doesn't happen. I think it's something that we have to do some sacrifices collectively. We have to make our our uh, our runs, our press, our defensive staff, so uh, we look better than on the ball, and everyone is is with more confidence. I think. And Postecoglou, we spoke about his arrival at Tottenham and the impact he's having there. I think boldness is probably a word a lot of people are using when talking about 
Tottenham and the risks that they take when they play. I think that showed in their defeat to Brighton last night, a source of debate for Spurs fans, the risks that a side are willing to take. Um, can you set up to try and deal with that? Do you, does that add yeah. to the challenge that you face on Sunday, knowing that they will, they will push you? For me, they, they do a very difficult thing, very, very difficult and uh, it's, it's, it's very special for them because it's true that, as you say, they take the risk, they build up, they play very open, but they don't concede a lot of goals. You d they don't concede a lot of goals in transition. It's not like you say, no, they play very open, as soon as they lose the balls, they are conceding. No, no, they are not conceding so many goals. They are not making so many mistakes with the, with the result of, of a goal against. No, no, they are defending really well, difficult situation. And it, this is uh, probably because they are very well coached and also because they are very good defenders individually. You know, they are, the keeper is playing very well, uh, the defenders, they are uh, defending very well in difficult situations and it's something that we all the teams want you know we want to build up from the back and then when you lose it don't concede but tottenham i think is the i don't know the best or one of the best teams uh, doing these things there's high lines though and there's the andrew postacoglu high line um have you got plans to exploit that on sunday uh, you always try to exploit the things that the opposition gives you uh, i don't think tottenham gives you a lot at a, there are some teams that will go more aggressive, like Tottenham, like uh, we know more. The others uh, will defend more the spaces. It's going to be different challenges, but I think they do it very, really well. Uh, Villa does the same, and it's difficult to get chances against them. Tottenham the same way. Uh, all the players are, I think, in the in the same line of thinking, and they don't make mistakes. They have scored in every league game so far this season as well, Tottenham underlining despite their squad looking injury depleted, how much threat that they they have ahead of this weekend again. Yeah, their offensive side is, is, is very good. They have top level players. Uh, we could see the game we played here. We have to be ready to, to face difficult duels at the back. We have to be ready to help each other because sometimes we are going to lose the duels, for sure, because uh, against Brennan Johnson, against Son, against Richarlison, against you're going to lose duels. It's a matter of, of time. We will try not to lose as much, as many, and then to help when, when that happens, to help, because uh, uh, they are always an offensive threat, yes. Finally, for me, playing New Year's Eve, be nice, get a win for the Bournemouth fans, then home for something to drink before midnight. Is, is that the plan for yourself? <laughs> it will be very nice. It will be very nice, but we know it's going to be very difficult. We have to be at our best. And uh, I, 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 right now we are in a good moment with uh, confidence, but uh, probably we have to even improve our level if we want to, to compete there, yes. Thank you, Sam. Can I just ask one quick one? Yeah. Sorry. Um, there's been a little bit of speculation about David Brooks and interest from both Leeds and Southampton. I know game time has been hard to come by for David so far in this season. Would you like to keep him or perhaps would him going to play matches be the best thing for, for his career as much as Bournemouth? No, it's not about uh, one individual situation. No, It's a matter of what sometimes what they think. No, uh, David the other day came, he played very good uh, uh, minutes and it's uh, things that not him or not all the players, not that play, uh, probably they are not getting the, rest, the minutes they want, they have to discuss with the with the club and take the the best possible option for everyone. You know, sometimes uh, it will be one one they will leave because all think is the best thing. Sometimes they will stay, and but uh, right now before the market opens, we I cannot and I will not speak about individual situation.